At the end of episode 10 of Andor, after all the effort Cassian and the other prisoners go through to escape, we learn the heartbreaking truth that Kino can't swim. What? What did he say? He can't swim. After going up against all the odds and finding the courage to take control of his life, Kino finds himself standing on the precipice but with seemingly no means to move forward. Cassian, on the other hand, can't do anything but watch as he is pushed over by another escaping prisoner. And what we are left with is a close-up shot on Kino's face filled with some pretty complex emotions. So it all really begs the question, what happened to Kino after this? Now, it's possible that we might get to see Kino again in another episode, just like how we left Sinta in episode 6, only for her to rejoin in subsequent episodes. But judging from an interview between Andy Serkis and Collider, it does seem like this is the end of the road for Kino, at least where season 1 is concerned. So what happens next to Kino is certainly a mystery and one that we will try to uncover, going through all the different possibilities of what might happen to Kino after episode 10. The first possibility is that Kino jumps anyway, despite knowing that he cannot swim, and left with very few alternatives, Kino might as well just decide to jump and try his luck. After all, he really doesn't have much to lose and can't really turn back. After all, there are still guards in the facility and the Empire is bound to take back control of the prison anyways. On top of that, Kino was complicit in a major way with helping to carry out the escape plan. He was effectively the leader of the riots, encouraging prisoners to make their escape. Wherever you are, right now. Get up. Stop the work. So it is almost a certainty that staying in prison would definitely lead to his execution or worse. Taking all this into consideration, it would make logical sense that Kino decided to jump and swim as best as he can. He might have also been able to find someone who could help him swim and guide him to shore. Being a well-known and respected leader in prison, it wouldn't be impossible that one of the prisoners in passing decided to help him out. But judging by the way the entire last scene with Kino was shot, it doesn't really seem like this is the case. It's hard to get a read on what Kino's emotions were, but it does seem to be a mixture of realization and resignation. Standing on the edge after going through so much and almost tasting freedom, only to be stopped by the fact that you can't swim must have been super soul crushing. And when I take a look at Kino's face, it seems to suggest that he knows he isn't going to survive the swim. He knows that this is where the road ends. At least that's sort of how I interpreted it. So if this is indeed the case and Kino does decide not to jump, then the only choice left would be to stay in the prison. But staying in prison doesn't necessarily mean doing nothing. Kino could very well decide to stay in prison and try to find another means of escape. In an earlier video, when theorizing about how the prisoners could escape, I thought about the possibility of the prisoners commandeering a transport. After all, the guards on the prison would need a means of transport to move about, taking breaks and changing shifts. So while transports could be limited, there might still be a possibility for Kino to take advantage of one and make his escape. In an earlier video, I had initially predicted that they would be able to find a transport while they were at the main command center, but Cassian and Kino don't seem to try and look for that possibility. And this might simply be the case that guard transports, much like prisoner transports, are flown in on a scheduled basis. So transports could be flown in to transport guards without needing to station the transports on the prison itself. So if this is indeed the case, what other alternatives does Kino have? Well, to be honest, not much. Given that he was a major character in the prison escape plan and killed a guard with witnesses around, that could mean so many things. He can't exactly quietly walk back into his cell or pretend like he didn't participate. Not to mention, it doesn't seem like Kino would even try doing that at this point, as Kino does say that he is willing to risk everything after all, if he's going to die, he might as well die trying to escape. So what I think most likely happened to Kino following his realization that he couldn't escape is that he could have just turned around and fought until the end. Kino, unwilling to go quietly back into his cell, could very well decide to take on the remaining guards and reinforcing Imperials as a bit of a last stand, allowing him to at the very least die on his own accord and based on his own decisions rather than leaving that decision to the Empire. 
and I think this would probably be the best way for Kino to go out if it is indeed the case that there is no chance for him to make an escape. That sort of ending would fit Kino really well, solidifying his character arc over the last three episodes, and I think it would also go further to symbolize the defiance of normal, average people against the tyranny of the Empire. Even if Kino does die, he dies fighting against his oppressors. Not only that, but his sacrifice and decision to help Cassian escape would also go on to have a galactic-wide consequence. Helping Cassian escape means that the Rebels will eventually recover the Death Star plans and help the original trilogy heroes down the line. It's such an awesome thought to entertain that his small sacrifice unbeknownst to him will go on to help bring down the Empire. It would also be a pretty poetic way for him to go down, at least that's what I think. And the fact that the show leaves Kino's fate somewhat ambiguous was definitely done to give the audience the chance to contemplate what the possibilities are. And regardless of what Kino's real ending is, it does give you the sense that the characters in the show are very much the day-to-day -day people of the galaxy. They don't really have the benefit of immense resources, power, or the force to keep them alive. A lot of it is really up to chance and dumb luck. And Kino is a really great example of this. Despite finding the courage within himself to take control of his own destiny, it all ends somewhat dishearteningly. Really just a super realistic take on what would actually happen. I think we're also used to seeing guys like Mando, Luke, and Boba Fett take down scores of enemies and walk out seemingly unsurvivable situations. That when we actually see guys like Kino and their fate, it really brings us back down to reality. It adds so much more gravity to the Star Wars universe knowing that not everyone could have done what Mando, Luke, and Boba did and that not everyone is as lucky as they are. Really just a fantastic creative decision that not only lends itself really well to this show, but to other Star Wars stories that we've gotten so far. So what do you think happened to Kino? Do you think he survives and makes it out, or does he meet his end here? Let me know what you think in the comments down below, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. I am The Lost Acolyte, and I have spoken.